What's up guys, Demandre Douglas here, back with another unboxing and review. Today we have the Blue C5L Max. This is actually one of the phones you can get for free for being on any type of government assistance, albeit EBT, Medicaid, etc. So, how does this phone compare to say, the Blue View 3? which you can also get on or off government assistance for about 60 bucks. So this phone here actually retails between $99.99 and the cheapest I found it was $79.99. New. Shoe. The box was very nice. To be honest with you, I feel like they put more effort into the box than they did the product itself. Their business inspired by design. And once you open the box, you will be greeted to the phone itself. The phone itself looks like your standard phone up front, big bezels, um, looks like your standard Android. But this pattern they have on the back is very militaristic, very rugged. I'm very fond of it. So let's go ahead and power this on. Inside of the box, I was surprised for several reasons. You're going to get a charger. It's not a two piece charger. And also, it is the older USB. So it did surprise me. That does say a lot. Keep your expectations in check. This is what surprised me. They actually give you a case with the phone as well as a screen protector. So I'm pretty sure, yeah, you guys can see that. Screen protector on the phone. Very nice touch because those are two items you normally immediately buy when you buy a cell phone. You got your nice instruction pamphlet here. This phone is actually dual SIM, which is really cool. So you can have two separate SIM cards in this phone and you can have two different phone numbers on this one phone. So you can effectively have your business number and your personal number without having two phones, which is really neat, really cool. Um, and lastly, I guess they were on their Apple-ish, they include a sticker. It's reflective, it's actually nicer than that actual Apple sticker. So, that's what you can look forward to in the box. Which again is a nice touch. Kudos to Blue. Oh wow. <laughs> So let's get into this. Again, your standard smartphone. Um, outside of the dual SIM, there's nothing I saw that this phone does that most phones don't. Um, let's get into the guts of it. We're gonna start off with the CPU-Z. And as you can see here, it is a quad core processor. One core clocked at two gigahertz and the other three are at 1.82, which is not bad for what this phone is. In comparison, we have the Blueview 3. Same level of phone, another blue phone. And on, I want to show you guys the geek bench. So whatever, we'll come back to that. So this thing is 5.46 inches, which is contrary to the 5.7 that it says here on the box. 5.7 inch curved glass display. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's curved, but it's like two pieces. I know you guys can see that lip right there. 
um, five megapixel selfie camera and eight megapixel main. So sometimes mistakes do happen and numbers never lie. It's just about figuring out which numbers are correct. And I'm gonna roll with CPU Z. 2000 milliamp battery sounds minuscule, but with this phone and the screen size and the resolution being 480, it actually gets you through a day. Three gigs of RAM is very nice. Micro SD card support is very nice. You also have a headphone jack at the top. This is weird, but the power, the, the way you charge the phone is at the top. Um, all of your buttons are on the right side of the phone. The power button is very tactile. As you can see, it has like grooves. And the up and down buttons are separate, which I love. Left side, nothing. Bottom, you just have your extra microphone. And this particular phone only has one microphone. So that's something to note. I have to see how that sound quality is. Internal storage, you're getting 32 gigs. Screen density, 196 PPI, very low. So this phone is cracked. But when I do do something with the extra phone, I find that I will pick up this phone before I pick up this phone simply because this phone has a 720p display and this phone has a 480 display. Like that, the difference is huge once you start getting into certain apps and videos. Now, if you're balling on the budget, then this is gonna be a go. But if you have any extra money to spend or any other options, I would definitely recommend you upgrade to some of the other products that Blue offer. And I'm gonna show you why in just a moment. And to be honest with you, the main reason is this screen. The colors look good. However, the resolution being 480 is, is just dated. Like it's starting to show its age. A child can look at it and know the difference. It's like looking at a regular smartphone versus one of those cheap tablets, as opposed to this phone, which has a crack in it. However, everything looks so much clearer, even on camera. Um, it's just something to note. You know what the key is? Cooking and Oh, the state, I love state guys. I'm so always like cooking. Anyway, so we're gonna clear all that out. Let's get into the Geekbench. I took the liberty of running this test for you guys, saving you guys 20 minutes of your life. If you appreciate that, hit the like button. So I ran this test upon unboxing the phone originally, signing into Google, signed straight into these benchmark apps. I wanted to get the best score I could. And I have 366 for the single core, 710 for the multi-core. Those are very low scores. However, for a phone of this price, that's to be expected. The lowest the list will go to compare you is a Xiaomi Redmi Note 7, which has a Snapdragon 660 in it, collect at 1.8. And it scored 328. So Minimum, you know this processor is faster than the Snapdragon 660 for whatever that's worth. Multi-core score is not even close. However, benchmarks don't tell the whole story. It's the everyday use of the phone. How fluid is it? Does it give you any issues? Does it force close any apps? Does it restart itself? And I can confidently say this phone did none of those stupid things. It simply did what it's supposed to do as a phone. I will note that I haven't pushed it too far. This is a speed test I'm on T-Mobile Wi-Fi. As you can see, the phone pulls down very, very good Wi-Fi. 
So we're at 300 megabytes per second. That's that's business class Wi-Fi. Like there's nothing you won't be able to do content wise as far as streaming and downloading. And we're getting about a hundred upload. So guys, those are great numbers. Like those are iPhone top tier flagship specs when it comes to your speed test and your Wi-Fi. So next we're gonna get an Antutu. This tests the GPU. This tests pretty much graphics performance. And I have not ran this benchmark yet. So we're gonna come back to that because it's gonna take about 15 minutes. And lastly, I wanna run through some apps real quick. Phone, um, straight in, no issues. Messenger, straight in, took just a second. Chrome, straight in. And then we're gonna run all these back to see if the RAM will hold it in the memory. Google, as I'm scrolling, as you can see, it's pretty fluid. I've seen better, but I've seen a lot worse. So that's pretty dope. Again, if you can pick this phone up for free, you can get this phone for like 40, 50 bucks. It's a great deal. Any more than that, and I would not pay. It also comes pre-installed with, pre with quite a few bloatware. There's Widoku, TikTok, Tile Link, Solitary, Powerbot, Blast, Power Pop Bubbles. Um, I actually deleted some of the stuff and there's still quite a few bloatware on here. So note that, however, the good thing is you can delete it. So it makes it irrelevant. We're gonna go into YouTube just to have it open. So, uh, let's see. Navigate to Walmart. I found some choices to choose. You can say things like the second one. So, which do you want? The first one. So let's just say you have this phone in your car, you're driving. Will you be able to navigate? Will you be able to do any and everything that a basic smartphone in 2022 should do? And the answer is yes. So no complaints there. And I'm gonna open one more app. Let's see. I'll open one game just to have it open, just to see. We're gonna open Roblox. And we're going to see if it will hold right there. So now let's run back through these. Quite a few apps, let's see. It tells us at the bottom, you have 0 0.93 gigs available out of three, which you don't really start with three, it's two something, but I digress. So, Geekbench, held it down, awesome. Speed test, right where it left off, awesome. 3D mark, held it. Phone, held it. If you can't if you can hold the phone, it would be a major problem. Messenger held it. Chrome held it. Okay, so so far no reloads whatsoever. Google. YouTube. Right where we left off, awesome. Google, awesome. Maps. And let's go to our game. And as you can see, it held all those games. It held all those apps, mind you. So this isn't a multitasking beast. However, it's a solid phone.
Um, so far, my only complaint with the phone is you got to put at least a 720p screen on here because it's how I interact with the phone the most. For what it's worth, the phone screen, as far as color accuracy and sharpness, looks good. It's just because of the resolution, it feels like it has this haze over it. It feels like I'm watching it through fog or something. If you can get past that or you don't care about that, to go. So let's see if you can just game on here. We have a couple games. The simple games I'll let you know right now will play very well. They're already installed on the phone. So, Triple Match with Doku, um, Temple Run, all those games like that will run just well on here without issue because of 3 gigs of RAM. Let's try Grand Theft Auto 3, though, which is an older game. However, it's still a fully 3D game, nonetheless. So it did not take long at all to get into the game. And as you can see right there, the game loaded very quickly. fluid no frames are dropping I do see a little shadow effect with the trees younger and I played this on PC and even on phones this was my go-to game to see if I could break the device that I was using it on. Um, I would pretty much post up in a corner and I would cause as much havoc as I could and I would see how many characters and explosions I could fit on the screen before the device started lagging. Now this is Grand Theft Auto 3 on the blue C5L Max, and it works great. There were no issues. Now, moving on to something a little bit more demanding, I'm gonna go into Roblox. I've had like regular phones that I bought from Metro, PCS, and T Mobile that had issues running certain games within Roblox, like Greenville. So I know a lot of people look at Roblox like a kitty game. However, when it comes to pushing the level of graphics in your device, it, it does well. You're not playing Roblox with just anything. So I am looking for a green reveal and I will default to Brookhaven. We already know our internet was pretty fast, so that's going to depend as well. Um, we're getting into these games fairly quickly, and I believe that's mostly due to the internet. But we are in Brookhaven. It looks nice. There's some pop-in in the back. But, like, I'm surprised. Oh, there was a little lag. Somebody drove by. So, um, 
if there were multiple characters on the screen, because I can see it dropping frames, this would be an issue. So I'm going to say, if you want to play Roblox, this phone is not it. It looks good. I'm moving around food. Okay, did you guys see that? A lot of popping. So kudos to the developers for getting this game to run on so many different devices. The skateboard. But um yeah, Roblox is a little too advanced for this phone. But if you're buying this phone, you're not buying it to play games mainly. You're buying it to handle business. But anyway, guys, that is, oh, last thing, camera. The camera is garbage on here, period. So, screen and the camera. The camera is so bad on this phone, I had problems uploading receipts on Fetch. That's how bad this camera is. That photo actually looks pretty decent. If you're, you're not using this for social media. If you're using this camera, it is because you need to take a picture of some important or pertinent information that you're going to need to recall. It's not because you're at a family function, vacation, social setting at all. So I had to note that. Um, the front camera's even worse. It says it's five megapixels. I'm not sure if I believe them. It looks like two to me. However, as you can see in good lighting and decent lighting, you in great lighting, you're gonna get decent pictures. In good lighting, you're gonna get okay pictures. If you have anything less than good lighting, no pictures. Anyway, guys, my name is Demondre Douglas. Please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And I'm not gonna do a giveaway on this phone just because I don't believe anybody wants it. But if you guys do, let me know and we will give this phone away. Matter of fact, we will give this phone to the 10,000 viewer who leaves a comment. All you have to do is hit the like button, subscribe, whoever the 10,000 viewer is you will receive a C5L Max from me for being a loyal subscriber. Thank you guys. Be blessed.